Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the pineal gland. What does it actually do inside of the brain? There are a number of people who think it's quite important. How important is it? And what really is the seat of the soul in the brain? Let's get into it. Descartes, for example, believed that the pineal gland was the seat of the soul because they opened up the brain and they saw the left and they saw the right, the divided brain. And of all the pieces which were divided, one on one side and one on the other, there was only one thing that seemed to have one piece, being the pineal gland. Now you could possibly argue that the pineal gland does have an opposite in the pituitary gland. So you still have two. That kind of information might change the mind of Descartes if he were still here. Now, Jung also agreed with Descartes for reasons of watching people who had epileptic problems. Those epileptic problems would sometimes lead into a near-death experience. And in that near-death experience, the person or individual might see an angel. An angel might come and talk to them. And they understood that the pineal was involved in all of that. And so this led Jung, possibly, to believe that the pineal gland was the seat of the soul. So what does the pineal gland actually do? it secretes melatonin into our system. And so what does melatonin do? Well, it puts us into sleep. And so it takes us from being very active to being in a very deep, relaxed state. So I like to say melatonin is a phase changer. It changes you from being in one mode to a completely different mode. So in this way, melatonin we think we take it's it, it's so simple, right? You can go down to your drugstore and get a little extra melatonin. They actually did a study in France. They tried to see if taking melatonin would stop women from getting pregnant. And during that study, they gave these women massive amounts of melatonin with no side effect. So it's a really wonderful thing. The person that told me that story said that they gave them enough melatonin to knock out an elephant with absolutely no side effects. So they thought it was great for that reason. So we think melatonin is so simple, so easy and not that relevant, but really it is, it's a phase changer. The other thing that the pineal gland secretes is DMT naturally. And that's a very good reason not to ingest DMT because when you ingest something, so for example, if I take an herbal laxative, when I need to, okay, but if I take it over and over and over again, my body will stop producing motilin. So what you ingest, your body quits producing on its own. So if you keep ingesting DMT, your body will shut off the natural production of DMT in very deep sleep, which is part of the rejuvenative process. And when we take a very long retreat in the dark, that's another reason when you go to meditate, if you can get yourself into a completely silent room and a completely pitch dark room, it will produce more melatonin and more chance for DMT, both from your pineal gland. And those are the phase changers. So to give an idea of why that's important. It's depending on how much melatonin is in your system, it will vary the strength of the experience that you have. And so in my book, I wrote a book called Hacking. It was a, it's an old book. I, I wrote it like 10 years ago, but it's still relevant. It still has some really cool stuff in it. The stages of sense reversal, the five breast states are in there. And that was my answer for heart rate variability at the time. I didn't have that language, but that's what I was doing with the five breast states. I was going all the way down into the deepest 
heart rate variability resonance. So it's very cool for, for that reason. But in that book, I write about an experience that I had. And I had been doing Kriya Yoga, and then I lay down on the floor, and I fell asleep momentarily. And then the, the movement of the limbic system, as I felt it as energy within my body, it woke me back up. And I continued in this hypnogogic state, meditating. And I had this profoundly deep experience where the body was gone, the breath was completely gone. In fact, that, that freaked me out to such an extent that I took myself out of the experience. But before that, I, I felt like I was swimming in outer space, like I was literally out in space, but I had no body and there was no breath or anything. And then in the distance, I saw this huge spiritual light. It actually looked like a star out in space. Uh, and at the same time, God was talking to me. The Divine Mother actually was speaking to me and reassuring me that I was freaking out and I was going to come out of this experience, but it was going to be okay. So it was very, very beautiful, very kind, so profound that it kind of freaked me out for a little while because I, I wasn't exactly ready to receive these. I wanted the experience, but I wasn't psychologically ready to be okay with all of that. And it was so profound because of the high level of melatonin. Where does the melatonin come? From the pineal gland. So really, really relevant part of the brain. And, and that's what it's doing for you. The more melatonin you have, the more... It's, it's like being in a good movie. The more, the better the story is, the more you just soak into the show, into the movie, right? And if the movie's not so good, the story is not so good, things don't line up right, you kind of pull yourself out of it and you're like, oh, this is weird. This is not such a great movie. That's what melatonin is doing to you in your meditation. So the more melatonin you have, the more profound the experience will be to you. So now fast forward to today, I have explained, I think I explained on a video, and I, I know I explained in the Patreon group, that that state, when you have the freeze response and you have the tranquil breath and you have the roll up into the brain, You're, the yogi feels it as energy, the limbic projections, which are normally cascading through the body, have come back into the brain. And so all you perceive is the brain. And what's in the brain is the light, the light of the spiritual eye. So you perceive directly the brain. And Lahiri Mashai said, this is the Krishna state because that's the true guru, right? You are there with the true guru, the spiritual eye right in front of you. And so that's the Krishna state because you're actually with Krishna in that moment. The true, true meaning of Krishna. You're right there with him. This is, this is perfect. We just had John Mashtami, right? So really beautiful state. And I go there every single time that I sit to meditate with Kriya Yoga. And so, but it always varies in degree of profoundness. So it's not as profound every single time as that very first experience. So there are different shades. There are different levels of the same experience and that's all based on how dark the room is that I'm in, how completely silent the room is that I'm in, when was the last time that I ate, how long have I fasted before that meditation, and so how slow is my tranquil breath. All of that comes factoring in and all of those will affect the level of melatonin in your system. And so you can have that experience and it can be just oh, hair on fire coming out of it. And you can come out of it and it's like, yeah, it was, it was, it was like that. And so it's, it's uh, the same experience. And you, you gotta know this kind of thing because you, you need to classify your experiences if you want to understand them. Okay, this fits into that box and this fits into that box. You have to be able to see it. And you have to know that that experience can vary in 
profoundness, and that's going to be based on the melatonin that's in your system. So really, really, really important part of the brain. We, I love the pineal gland, but is it the seat of the soul? So let's look at the research, the beautiful research of Michael Pessinger and Todd Murphy. And what they discovered was that all of the very, very deep, profound experiences were coming out of two parts of the brain. They were coming out of the right hippocampus and the left amygdala. So the left amygdala is bliss. That's where the bliss is. So that's the purely positive emotional chip inside of our brain. And the right hippocampus is spatial and it holds all of the images of the brain. And so we say to ourselves, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? And so we, when we look at a tree and we say, oh, that's a tree, and we label it tree, right? T-R-E-E. -E. That label comes from the left hippocampus. But the image that lets us know what it actually is, that image of the tree in our brain, that comes from the right hippocampus. It's held only there. And so what does that mean? It means that all of the meaning of our entire lives is held in the right hippocampus. Now that sounds like the land of God, doesn't it? All that meaning. And the closer we get to the right hippocampus, we touch on that meaning and we come back out and we say, oh my God, I had this feeling like I know everything. And you'd say that to your friends and your friends say, well, tell us. And you can't because it was purely an experience that you felt because you came close to the very center of meaning. Also, because it's holding images, that images are based on light. So the right hippocampus is the land of light. It's holding meaning and it's holding light. And that, that pretty much sounds divine, doesn't it? And that's why I believe the right hippocampus is the seed of the soul in the brain. That's the, that's the house. That's the room of God. That's where we come to commune in the brain, in the right hippocampus. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the depth of that experience of touching on that center in the brain, getting close to it, the profoundness of the experience is going to vary based on how much melatonin and possibly DMT is in your system, natural DMT, because you're producing it in the dark. Very beautiful, very beautiful stuff. So I hope that gives you some ideas about the pineal gland, the left amygdala, and the right hippocampus. Very big stuff, beautiful stuff. Oh my God, I just, I'm just in, so in love with the brain. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's, it's so clear. We all have these. And it means that we, each and every one of us, we have the capacity to touch on these things. And we just gotta know how. And that's what this channel is all about. So if you love this, be sure to hit that bell down below. And I'll see 